Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Today's URC round 13 review, which is a bit strange since we've had 14, 15 rounds um, already, but obviously because of all the interruptions and stuff like that, these, this past weekend was actually a catch-up weekend of matches that were supposed to have been um, played. Well, not catch-up weekend as opposed to they should have been played before, but um, weekends where the European Champions Cup and stuff like that happened for the overseas teams, they are then local derbies for us, the African teams and stuff like that. So either way, there were only two URC games this weekend. They were back um, better to, or back to local derbies. And they were, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say the best advert for the game in terms of very entertaining, sort of very good brand of rugby. Um, it's a bit disappointing after the past few weeks where we have had some very good games and very high quality of rugby. We didn't really see it this weekend. Very much the Sharks and Lions games were impacted by weather. And the Bulls and the Stormers games, for whatever reason, were just a little bit sloppy. Um, but a uh, pretty close game in terms of the Bulls and the Stormers. And it's a pretty big ramifications in terms of the table because we have now caught up all the games. And so the URC table is very much the, what it's going to, what it's looking like um, in, in its truest sense because we have kept, caught up all these games. Before we look at the results and stuff again, just talk about some of the performances and how we felt the round went. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. So in terms of the two games, they were the Stormers edging out the Bulls down in Cape Town 19 points to 17 before the Sharks put the Lions to the sword a little bit, a bonus point victory down in Kings Park. Now, off the bat, as a Lions fan, I'm not overly upset by that Sharks result because of the way we've played over the last few weeks. And I think that the biggest issue with the Lions is a personnel issue and when it came to playing on Saturday with in wet conditions where you couldn't throw the ball around, we did not have the pack. We did not have the team to be able to go to a slugfest. You know, not against the likes of a spring full spring front row. You know, the likes of a Sia Khaleesi in around there. Renny Ohujo, um, Leroux coming off the bench. Um, some very big locks in and around that um, that side. And it showed, you know, it showed that the pack, the Lions pack, you know, kind of sort of struggles to dominate up front. And when it came to sort of the back line, stuff like that, not too much opportunity, very wet in terms of, 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 of the, the conditions. So it wasn't really sort of the, the counter-attacking, the quick speed that the Lions have prided themselves on over the last few months. Um, if you look at the Stormers, um, not to say that, sorry, in terms of that, not to say that the Sharks didn't play well, um, but I think it was, again, the Lions were always going to struggle. And the Sharks, to their credit, coped very well with the conditions and, and very much asserted their dominance, and especially in that 10 minute period after the only DBC got sent off where they did score two tries. In terms of the Stormers versus the Bulls games, 19 points to 17, um, I thought the Stormers were better. I thought they were better than the Bulls. I didn't think that the Bulls really pitched up, and we've seen the Bulls playing some decent rugby, but the Stormers have been the form side in the country for the last few, pretty much the entire tournament, really, in terms of a side who have played the best rugby, who have looked really good. Um, and I think that uh, we, you know, we, we're looking at the Stormers and, they're playing probably to to really the maximum of their potential because they are a side where people thought, you know, squad-wise, do they have the depth? They've obviously got some quality players, no doubt about that. You know, Steven Kitsoff, France, Mahara, Scarra, and Tabeni, um, you know, Marvin Ori, when he's back, Salman Murat, um, you know, Evan Ruiz playing some fantastic rugby, and that's just in the pack. Back down, you've got Herschel Yankees, you've got Warwick Lant, Damien Willems, uh, Sibylla Sinatli, there's a lot of talent across that squad. But the issue was, did they have the depth? And after losing so many important players, would they be able to cope with the loss? The answer is yes. Yes, they can. Um, and, and I thought that the Bulls were just a little bit sloppy. I thought the game in general, you know, there were a lot of knock-ons. There were quite a lot of handling errors, um, a lot of scrams and stuff like that. And said piece-wise, the Stormers' lineup was pretty dodgy in the first half um, and sort of managed to fix itself as the game went on. But uh, I just thought the Bulls didn't quite pitch up when the Stormers took advantage of that. And that Damien Williams uh, um, drop goal, and I thought Damien Williams had played pretty well on Saturday. I thought that's one of the, some of the best rugby I've seen him play for a long time and hopefully it means that he's really gaining confidence as to sort of take that next level up. Um, but if we look at terms of, of what this sort of means for the table as well as then the Shields for example, all of a sudden, you know, we're sitting with South African teams looking pretty solid. You know, we, we're sitting there going, Leinster obviously have always been the, uh, the dominant side and continue to be the dominant side. Ulster Glasgow Warriors are sitting in second place with 50 points. The Stormers are suddenly sitting three points adrift from second um, with the same amount of games. So Stormers all of a sudden are tied fourth with Munster and, and um, you know, a couple of games. If the last three games were to go their way, they could find themselves within the top four. The Sharks are currently uh, eighth, just four points off second. Uh, the Bulls eighth, seven points off second. So 
you know, there's, there's, there is more, there are fewer points between second and the third ranked South African side than there are between second and first. And I think that's very encouraging, you know, that, that the Bulls are seven points away from being in the top two um, as the third ranked South African side. Sharks are four points away from being top two and Stormers are three points away from being within the top two. So I think that's very positive in terms of can the South African sides compete? Because the, the answer is yes, they can. And we've seen that sides have come down here and struggled to play in South Africa. And, you know, we don't want it to become a tournament where basically the home side's always the winner. But it is good to see that even right now, because I think the South African sides will only improve with players coming in, um, well, at least these three South African sides, you know, the Lions are currently sitting down at 12. But, I mean, unfortunately, they, this was actually quite an improvement given the fact that they were pretty much nowhere um, before the month of March because they had started their season off so badly. Um, they, did, they still do play Benetton. I think they've got Dragons away. So there's an opportunity for them to try and climb up. And I think if they can get to top 10, maybe, I think that would be a very successful tournament given the fact that this Lions squad are overperforming because they just don't have the quality that the other sides do. But um, all of a sudden, we're looking at sides and playoff spots. We're looking at sides who would not look out of place in a European Champions Cup, in a European Challenge Cup. And I think that's the biggest thing we want to see as South African fans, the fact that we can compete, that we deserve to be there, but also that this was the right decision to go north. And I do think it was. And I think that we're looking at this table, we're seeing that we're competing. Hopefully, years time, you know, we're going to be seeing these sides further up the table and very much closing in and trying to maybe reduce the gap from Leinster and maybe try and, you know, establish themselves as the dominant shield, as, as it were. Um, so I think it's pretty positive. I think that this weekend we, we saw some very good individual performances across the teams, I think, which was quite promising. Um, we've now had Springbok alignment camp for the last couple of days. So uh, as we sort of head towards the international season, which kicks off in a couple of months, and it's all sort of building up to the rugby crescendo, I suppose, as we move towards playoffs, as we move towards the end of the season and plenty of exciting rugby to come. Let me know what you thought about the weekend's results down in the comments below. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.